In this video, I'll uncover whether or not dairy is bad for you. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, it is a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, join our notification community, and I'm going to help you excel your health and your life. In this video, we're talking about is dairy bad for you? You know, many of the people I work with, they ask me all the time whether or not dairy is bad. They've heard that you should stay away from it completely because it's horrible for you. And then some people found that, you know, it's a great health food and they should be consuming it more often. And so anyway, what we have to really do is kind of break through all these different questions and talk about the facts about dairy. We're going to talk about the benefits, we're going to talk about the problems, and I'm going to give my final thoughts as to whether or not you should actually be consuming dairy. Now when we look at dairy, first of all, let's talk about the benefits. Now when we look at dairy, there's a lot of benefits it has to offer. First of all, it's loaded with fat-soluble vitamins like A, D, and K2. And if you're getting it from a good pasture-raised source, essentially what you're going to find that the grass-fed pasture-raised sources of dairy is loaded with a lot more K2 and a lot more vitamin D and is much healthier for you. Now, the other thing is, is this dairy is loaded with CLA. This is conjugated linoleic acid and omega-3s. And once again, if you're getting it from a pasture-raised grass-fed source, it has 500% more CLA in it than your conventional dairy. And if you didn't watch that video that I recently did, what we basically found is that CLA is a really awesome fat burner in the body. It also has a lot of uh, electrolytes and minerals like calcium, magnesium, and potassium. It's a good source of protein and immunoglobulins, which are going to help boost your immune system. And then also a great source of probiotics if you're eating fermented dairy like yogurt, cheese, and kefir. And so when we look at dairy as a whole, it has a lot of great health benefits to offer. So we can't ignore these benefits, but what we have to do also is make sure that we're talking about some of the problems with dairy and make sure we navigate this correctly. Now when we look at some of the problems, first of all, people are very sensitive to the protein in it. Some people are very sensitive to the protein in dairy. So if you don't do well with butter, uh, soft cheeses, yogurt, ice cream, there's a good chance you're sensitive to the protein in the dairy. And what you can do is you can actually eliminate dairy from your diet for about three months. You can focus on healing your gut and then reintroduce it. By then, typically the white blood cells forgot about that sensitivity and then you can do just fine with eating dairy. Now, the other problem with dairy is many people are absolutely intolerant to it. And this means that typically they lack the enzyme to break it down. Now, when we look at this intolerance issue, it's pretty interesting because basically what's been found is that, you know, the conventional dairy that's pasteurized and homogenized, basically that pasteurization process goes and really um, just breaks down the enzymes in milk and it makes it pretty much not available in it. So the people who aren't able to break it down well and the people who are buying the conventional milk without the lactase in it, then they are typically going to have a big problem. But if they switch to raw milk, then in many cases they'll do fine because the raw milk has the a high amount of lactase in it because it wasn't broken down in that pasteurization process. And so the other thing that's interesting about the intolerance is there's people who have been intolerant and what I'll do is I'll put them on a digestive enzyme and then all of a sudden that intolerance goes away. And so anyway, there's two different ways to navigate that intolerance. First of all, raw milk has much more of the enzyme lactase in it. So therefore you're going to be able to do better with it. But also people who um, don't have that can take a digestive enzyme. And I'll put a link to the one in the description below that I use. But once again, if I put them on the digestive enzyme, they'll find that a lot of the issues around dairy start to subside. Now the next problem here is pasteurization. So the pasteurization process is interesting because a lot of people say, well, it's not dairy that's bad for you. It's what you know people have done to dairy. And so when we look at pasteurization, essentially it does a couple things. First of all, like I already mentioned, it's going to really diminish the enzyme lactase in the milk. And the other thing that it's going to do is it's going to diminish the nutrient quality. So when we look at you know the fatty acids in it being broken down and, and the overall nutrient profile just being reduced at a significant amount because because the pasteurization just kind of kills a lot of the benefits that milk has to offer. Now, the reason that milk is pasteurized is in order to make sure that you're burning the bacteria out of it, but the problem is, is that it kills a lot of the benefits that it has to offer as well, and this is where people start to become intolerant to milk. Now, the other thing that we have to look at when we think about milk is factory farms, okay? So if you're getting your conventional milk from the grocery store, the conventional grocery store, there's a good chance it's coming from a factory farm. And by factory farm, I mean cows that are in very close 
quarters, they're getting sick all the time, so they're pumping them full of antibiotics, and then also they're trying to produce more milk from the cows, so they're pumping them full of hormones, and the whole situation is just completely unhealthy, it's not sustainable, and if you're getting dairy from an unhealthy animal, then the dairy itself is going to be unhealthy too. So anyway, we want to make sure that we're also getting sustainably raised, grass-fed, pasture-raised sources of dairy so that we can actually make sure that we're getting a good product there. Now here's some of my final thoughts. And when we look at dairy in general, okay, I don't believe that people should really ever drink the conventional dairy. I don't think that you should be buying the conventional dairy from the conventional grocery store. I think if it's not organic, if it's not pasture-raised, if it's not grass-fed, I wouldn't even utilize it in my lifestyle. And the other thing too is that you don't necessarily have to go and buy the expensive milk from the health food store, but what you can do is you can actually find a local farmer. You can go to like the Weston Price Foundation. You can find a local farmer that's producing the milk and will make sure that all these different things are in check when it comes to being sustainably raised. And so those are a couple things that I would consider there. And the other thing I'd consider is if you're someone who just doesn't do well with milk time and time again, and you know, you've tried to um, do the elimination diet and, and you know, fix your gut and you reintroduce it, you still don't do well with it, and you have the intolerance issue, then there's a good chance you should just avoid it altogether. Genetically, some people cannot handle milk, and that's just the way it is. And so if you're someone who's doing bad with it all the time, just give up on it and remove it from your diet completely, and you'll thank yourself because you'll feel much better for it. Your skin will be healthier for it because the people who have a lot of issues around milk, they have a lot of reactions. And so anyway, make sure you keep that in mind and give this video a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, put it in the comment section here below. Let me know your thoughts on milk and whether or not you drink it, some of the reactions you might have, some of the benefits you might have gotten from it. Put that in the comment section below. Share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so yet, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos on how you can improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.